Thank God the blood be applied uh, can cleanse every stain and every spot and make us as white as a driven soul is. Praise God. For the repentant one, this is the application of the blood of Jesus. Uh, bring them to a state to where they're made the righteousness of God. Uh, oh, we have killed it for laws. Uh, but what God does, uh, he takes all of our guilty stains Amen. in his darling son. Amen. Praise God. There's not a one of us sometime or another said, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful to be as innocent as a little child? And by the way, this promise here is not given to unfallen angels that know nothing of the herd of sin. It was given to the creatures of God who knows the herd of sin. That hurts and all. Oh, they want to be healed from sin and what it does. So no man sees God except in judgment until he wants to. I'm glad one day I want to see God. And I want to tell you when I saw him initially, <laughs> By faith through the word of God, that, that desire has grown through the year. I've never gone as deep as I want to go. I've never gone as far as I want to go. I've never arrived uh, to where I've said, uh, I don't need anything more. More, more about Jesus. I want to go deeper and deeper in the things of God. Well, we can do that if we know him. Well, because our hearts can see God and nobody can blind us except our own heart. If you can't see spiritual things, don't blame it on anybody else. It's a matter of your heart. When God gets a hold of your heart and you begin to seek God and God gets bigger in you than a Russian river or a mighty artesian well, it's then you can begin to see God in your life. Did you see God in that accident you almost had the other day? Did you see God when you went out last night? And you, well, we didn't have a clear sky last night. But on a clear night, so step out and look up and see the stars. The Bible said the firmament declares the glory of God. His handiwork. Oh, yes. I want to see God, don't you? We love him not blindly. But uh, because he's holy, because of who he is, that's why we love him. Somebody said, I don't have to have a reason to love God. Well, I don't know about that. John said, I love him because he first loved me. There's nothing wrong uh, with having a reason uh, to love God. I love him because he's holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, he never makes a mistake. He never errs. Uh, he never does wrong. He's holy. I love him because he's holy. Thanks be unto God. <laughs> Boy, I feel good in my soul this morning. I feel a little breeze blowing in from another country. I know what it is. I've experienced it before. It's the glory of God. You see, Moses endured seeing him who's invisible. You say, wait a minute. How do you see somebody invisible? Have you ever thought about it? There's this program on years ago, a show on, called The Invisible Man. Now what if you could become an invisible man? <laughs> Lord have mercy. You'd hear things that you'd wish you'd never heard. You'd see things you wish you'd never see. If you could become uh, an invisible man, well, you see, I don't have to get invisible, but I look unto him who is invisible. Amen. Seeing him who is invisible. You say, well, if he's invisible, you can't see him. <laughs> Depends on how you're looking at him. Right. God said spiritually, you can see him. With the eye of faith, hallelujah. You can see God uh, by seeking God. Continue to seek him, continue to serve him, and your eyes uh, will behold him uh, in all of his beauty, in all of his glory. What you need to do is go to your mental attic and start cleaning out everything that's impure, everything that's selfish, everything that's unkind, uh, and clean that out. Uh, and you'd be surprised uh, what you'll begin to see, uh, what you'll begin to perceive, uh, what you'll begin to enjoy right. when you clean the attic out. Amen. 
in your life. We've been having to clean up old my mother-in-law's house. And Ruth was a good housekeeper, but oh, she kept everything. I believe she kept every card that everybody ever sent to her. I mean, there are cards from the girls and the boys uh, going way back. She kept, seemed to keep everything. Uh, but uh, there comes a day that you got to clean out. And brother, if we want to see God, we better do some house cleaning. Some of you think you're going to see God? You listen to this old rock music during the week. And this hellish, and I'll say it, and I'll put that adjective on it. This hellish country music. Talks about the bar rooms and who's in bed with whose wife and all that crazy mess. Uh, spirit cried over a beer, a, a, a jug of beer. Uh, God help. Uh, you're not going to see God uh, unless you do some house cleaning, unless you get rid uh, of some of these things that's crowding God out of your life. Amen. 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 Oh, yes. Seeing God. Moses endured as seeing him who is invisible. And you know what Moses said? He said, show me thy glory. That's somebody wanting to see God. That's somebody seeking God. I can, Jesus said, I do nothing of myself. But as my father taught me, I always do those things that please him. And disobedience to God brings clutter in your life, clutter in the attic of your mind. For God to move about as he wants to, some of that clutter has got to be cleaned out. You see, when we no longer seek our own glory and our own things and we have singleness of mind toward God, unmixed emotion, unadulterated heart, our eyes, our thoughts, our aims, they're zeroed in on God. Oh, listen to me. If that's the way it is, you're going to see God. Amen. You can see him going down the road in the car behind the steering wheel. God gets so big, you feel like you've got to pull off the side of the road. God lets you in. Maybe by the bed at night when you have your devotion. And the day has wearied you and you're tired physically and you're worn out emotionally uh, and you get down to the bed uh, and there's something settles down in your heart. There's something swells up in your heart. You're seeing God when that happens. Amen. I'm glad when you face bereavement, the loss of loved ones like many of our folks have in the last while and it looks dark and in the darkness. <laughs> You begin to settle your mind on God. Uh, settle your affections on the Lord. Undividedly. I want to tell you something. In the darkness of night, uh, you can see God. I found out with satellite connection, when the cloud cover gets too heavy, the signal won't go through. You're out in the cold until the clouds go by and the blockage is gone. I'm telling you something. The signal between here and glory, it can get through every time. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Alfred Lord Tennyson lay dying and he said to his oldest son, who is an administrator, he said, son of all the poems I've written, he said, make sure that crossing the bar is the last poem in the book. Well, he did that, I don't know, unless Tennyson wanted to leave in the minds of those his testimony. That his deepest desire, his utmost desire, his primary desire was to see the Lord. Here's what Tennyson wrote. I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. <laughs> Well, glory, God's people in this life been made righteous, having a new nature and a new life. We can see God as we seek God.